I think we're looking again at a lost technology. And it was this ancient apocalypse 12,800 years ago that wiped that from the human memory back. And it looked to me like it had fallen off and incised in the stone itself of this oldest temple along the Nile. Maybe it was a toy, maybe it was a weather vane, maybe it's a model of something that actually flew. We don't know. Deep in the wilds of Egypt, archaeologists discovered the ancient answers to the deepest questions about mummification. Giant bones and mummies were found in places no man had ever dared to enter. This is a discovery of a relationship that we didn't know was possible. Why has this seemingly ordinary find just broken the careers of expert archaeologists? Let us explore how these mummies are the hidden key behind immortality. From Egyptian tombs to ocean roads. Mummification in ancient Egypt was a way to keep the body from rotting. People took out the organs, dried the body with salt, and wrapped it in cloth to prepare it for the afterlife. This process was important for the person's spirit in the next life. After years of research, scientists found an embalming workshop filled with sarcophagi and pottery. This find is particularly important because while many ancient cultures practiced mummification, the Egyptians had perfected the technique. The tools and materials found in this workshop could provide insights into the sophisticated methods used by the Egyptians. Another part of the globe, a team exploring the deep sea near Hawaii came across what looked like a paved pathway at the bottom of an old lake bed. They named it the Yellow Brick Road, after a popular song. This unusual underwater feature sparked a range of theories about its origin, including some far-fetched ideas about ancient civilizations. Although experts believe the formation is natural, some people prefer to believe it might be the remains of a long-lost civilization. Each discovery tells its own story of neglect, discovery, and human curiosity. From Reichard's unfortunate upbringing to the unveiling of ancient Egyptian embalming practices and the intriguing underwater formation near Hawaii, these findings illustrate the diverse and complex nature of historical research. They highlight not only human achievement and intellectual pursuit, but also the occasional oversight and error that come with it. These tales are not just academic, they are reminders of the depth and breadth of human history, filled with both oversight and sophistication. They keep scholars, and the public alike, engaged in uncovering the layers of the past that shape our understanding of humanity. In the last hundred years, it might seem like we have found all there is to uncover. Yet, archaeology still has much to reveal and the discoveries we continue to make are often surprising and complex, challenging what we thought we knew about history. Consider the remarkable archaeological finds from the vast and remote grasslands of Patagonia, Argentina. There, researchers have unearthed evidence that redefines our understanding of humans' relationships with animals. The focus of this discovery is not the typical domesticated dog, but rather a fox species known as Dusikion avus, which resembled a jackal and was about the size of a German shepherd. These finds suggest that 1,500 years ago, the people living as hunter-gatherers in this area developed a unique bond with these foxes. Originally, when these findings were made in 1991, they showed that the remains of both humans and these foxes were often found together, implying a relationship that went beyond simple coexistence. Surprisingly, these foxes didn't just live off human leftovers. Their diet was strikingly similar to that of their human companions. Analysis of their teeth showed they ate both meat and plants, including a specific type of plant called mazike, which was also part of the human diet. This information prompts one to wonder, if these foxes were so well integrated into human society, why didn't their chances of survival increase? Despite their close relationship with humans, the foxes from the Diabos lineage became extinct about 500 years ago. This extinction raises important questions about their interactions with humans and the factors that did not favor their survival. It's intriguing to think about how different our understanding of domestication might be if these foxes had survived. While the idea of having a fox as a pet might sound appealing, 
It's important to remember that foxes today are not suited for domestic life. The complexities and challenges of trying to domesticate today's foxes would be substantial. As we continue to uncover more about our past, these archaeological findings not only broaden our knowledge, but also reshape the questions we need to ask. They remind us that history is a continuously evolving field, full of surprising developments and unresolved questions. This ongoing discovery process ensures that the study of archaeology will keep us engaged and questioning, constantly challenging the simple explanations we have about the past. In a routine construction project for a parking lot in Austria, workers stumbled upon an unusual burial, two skeletons, arm in arm, lying atop a horse. At first glance, this scene suggested a romantic tale from ancient Roman times. However, the truth revealed through DNA analysis was quite mundane. These were not lovers, but a mother and daughter, their lives intertwined even in death. This assumption of romance highlights our tendency to romanticize the past, interpreting it through a lens of modern sensibilities. The real story here, though less glamorous, speaks to familial bonds that were deemed important enough to be immortalized in burial. The fact that these women were buried with a horse also suggests they had a high social standing in their community. However, the exact reason why a horse was included in their grave remains unexplained, pointing to our limited understanding of ancient cultural practices. Across the sea in England, Another intriguing artifact surfaced unexpectedly in a man's garden while he was tending to his plants. This stone, inscribed with ancient Irish characters known as Ogham, and dating back 1,600 years, bewildered historians and archaeologists. The artifacts from Ireland to an English garden is a compelling hint at past interactions, perhaps migrations or trade, between the two regions. Yet, despite this exciting possibility, the stone's purpose and meaning are still unclear, illustrating the often incomplete nature of our grasp on history. Similarly, the discovery of a 2-500-year-old helmet in Croatia during an archaeological dig adds another layer to our understanding of ancient European cultures. Found in a burial mound on the Pelgisac Peninsula, this helmet is a rare find. Only around 40 similar helmets have been found across Europe, each offering clues about the past. This particular helmet shows influences from both Greek and local Illyrian craftsmanship, suggesting a blend of cultures that enriched this region. These findings, while fascinating, often raise more questions than they answer. They serve as a reminder of how much of our history remains unknown, with many stories and explanations lost to time. Each archaeological discovery provides a snapshot, a glimpse into the lives of those who lived long before us. But these snapshots are incomplete, and the full picture of our past often eludes us, leaving us to piece together what we can from the relics and ruins that have survived. Let's dig into our ancient past and what it reveals. Warriors' Rituals at Zakor Though filled with gaps and uncertainties, this ongoing exploration of our past is crucial. It connects us with our ancestors profoundly allowing us to reflect on their lives and cultures. Despite the incomplete stories and unresolved questions, these glimpses into history enrich our understanding of humanity's path through the ages. The bronze helmet found near Zakor might look ordinary, just like any other ancient warrior's gear, designed to protect the head, with a simple rectangular cutout to see through. It was discovered with other typical items, metal clasps called fibulae, pottery from Greece, and some jewelry. Yet archaeologists now think this helmet might have had a special purpose beyond battle. It could have been an offering or used in old religious rituals in Croatia around 2,500 years ago. Historians suggest that when it was new, this helmet would have shone brightly in the sunlight, perhaps meant to dazzle and scare enemies in combat. This idea adds a layer of significance to the find, making us wonder about the rituals and beliefs of the people who used it. As ongoing excavations in the Pilas Peninsula continue, who knows what other relics will be uncovered? Over in northeastern Serbia, what was once dismissed as empty, possibly useless land, has revealed a surprising discovery. 
Archaeologists have uncovered evidence of a 7-0-0-0-year-old farming community. This discovery came after the area was fully surveyed and an anonymous locale hinted that something significant lay hidden there. The find includes several ditches that mark where parts of the settlement might have been. This site in Serbia was initially overlooked, thought to be just a barren stretch, filled with wildlife. But now, it turns out to be an important link to understanding the region's ancient inhabitants. The term monumental is often used to describe such finds, perhaps to give them a sense of grandeur that might otherwise be overlooked. Both these discoveries challenge our assumptions about the past, revealing that what might appear as just another artifact or an empty piece of land can offer important insights into human history. They remind us that every piece of the past, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, holds a story that can give us a greater understanding of the ancient world. As these archaeological digs press forward, each layer of soil or artifact may slowly piece together the vast jigsaw of human history. Between 5,400 and 4,400 BC, an area spanning approximately 11 to 13 hectares was studied using methods that date old objects, and it was revealed that there were signs of old settlements. These areas were likely inhabited by the Vinca culture, a group known to live in southeastern Europe during that era. The Vinca people were early farmers, who also raised animals like goats and cattle. The evidence of their existence includes not only their farming practices, but also several houses that had been destroyed by fire. Numerous items from daily life were found in these burnt remains. While local people have long known about these findings, it was only recently that scholars had the opportunity to explore these sites in detail. This raises questions about what other forgotten historical sites might be hidden in secluded areas around the world, waiting to be discovered and studied. Shifting focus to another intriguing topic, recent studies have used modern methods to examine how accurate the Bible is in describing historical events. These studies used advanced techniques to analyze very small samples of materials such and seeds found in Jerusalem, one of the oldest cities documented in the Bible. By comparing these samples with information from tree rings that date back thousands of years, Researchers have more accurately identified the timeline of events described in the biblical texts. For instance, they confirm that Jerusalem was first settled between the 12th and 10th centuries BC and grew significantly by the 9th century BC. They also validated a reference to an earthquake in the 8th century BC mentioned in the Bible, providing a physical proof for a historical event noted in the religious text. Now, Let's look at a unique discovery from the Roman era involving fish sauce, known as garam, an essential part of Roman cuisine similar to how ketchup is used today. In 2019, archaeologists discovered a Roman shipwreck near the coast of MCA, Spain. This shipwreck was remarkably well-preserved under the sea, protected by sediments that prevented decay. The ship carried over 300 containers, many still with labels, filled with wine, olive oil, and a large quantity of fish sauce. This discovery highlights the dietary preferences of ancient Romans and showcases the extraordinary conditions that allowed these organic materials to survive underwater for thousands of years. Each of these cases illustrates how advances in archaeological techniques allow us to uncover and better understand the intricacies of human history. These findings connect us with our past showing the resilience of human societies and their advancements. They also remind us of the continuous efforts needed to uncover and comprehend the full breadth of our historical and cultural heritage. Next, uncover stories of forgotten lives and hidden treasures. Echoes from the Mississippi Asylum. Consider the tale of a woman buried about 100 years ago at a site that once was the Mississippi State Lunatic Asylum in operation from 1855 to 1935. Her grave, like many others there, was marked only by a simple wooden stake and a pine coffin, the cheapest available. This place became the final resting area for many, but without any fanfare or lasting memorials, highlighting the stark reality of how some lives are forgotten after death. 
This woman had a rare condition known as porcelain gallbladder, where the gallbladder turns hard and white like porcelain due to calcium buildup. It's unusual to find such conditions in archaeological digs because organs generally decay rapidly after death. That her illness went unrecognized during her lifetime suggests she lived with significant untreated health issues. It paints a bleak picture of neglect, hinting that those around her might have been unaware of the severity of her condition. Shifting the scene to a different time and place, archaeologists in China unearthed a 2200-year-old tomb in Wangden, near the City of Honorable. This grand tomb is believed to have belonged to a king from the Chu state during the turbulent Warring States period. In stark contrast to the simple grave in Mississippi, this royal tomb was filled with over a thousand items, including intricately crafted bronze works and lacquerware adorned with gold, silver, and mother-of-pearl, depicting various natural scenes and mythological stories. The Chu State, located in the fertile Yi River Valley, was a cultural melting pot where traditions from the north and south of China blended. This unique cultural identity was not only reflected in their art, but also influenced their governance and military strategies. The rich array of artifacts, including musical instruments and ceremonial vessels found in the tomb, indicates a sophisticated society that valued ritual and had a complex social structure. It's quite revealing how history remembers and records lives. While a king's tomb overflows with artifacts that tell tales of cultural richness and social complexity, a woman with a significant medical condition lies in an unmarked grave, her struggles and existence nearly invisible in historical records. This contrast shows a clear divide in how different lives are valued and commemorated. It underscores a broader narrative about the inequalities that persist in how we document and honor past lives. Some are celebrated and remembered through the ages, while others are barely acknowledged, their stories lost to time. Despite the Chu state's historical strength and vibrant culture, it eventually collapsed under the dominance of the Qin state, marking a significant turning point in Chinese history. The recent uncovering of a tomb from this era offers a somewhat clouded glimpse into a period that appears reluctant to unveil its full story, showing us the remnants of Chu's splendor. Humans have always been able to survive in tough conditions. For example, our ancestors lived in lava tubes, natural underground tunnels created by volcanic activity. In Saudi Arabia, archaeologists found evidence that people lived in the Umj sun lava tubes as far back as 7,000 years ago. These ancient people chose the cooler, more stable environment of the tubes over the hot desert above especially during the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. Inside the tubes, it was easier for organic materials to be preserved, helping us learn more about how these people lived. As we continue to study these sites, we'll likely discover more about how humans adapted to these difficult places. Turning to the fascinating Cleopatra, deep beneath the sands near Alexandria in the ancient temple of Taposiris Magna, a recently discovered tunnel has reignited the interest of those searching for Cleopatra's final resting place. Extending an impressive 4,260 feet and descending about 42 feet below the temple, this tunnel, carved entirely through solid rock, stands as a testament to the architectural skills of its time. Kathleen Martinez, an archaeologist from the University of Santo Domingo, has dedicated nearly two decades to the search for Cleopatra's tomb. Her unwavering commitment might seem poignant as she sifts through the sands and accounts of a past that stubbornly holds on to its details. This site, located just west of Alexandria, has consistently attracted those fascinated by historical exploration, drawn by stories of Cleopatra's legendary charm, intelligence, and tragic love affairs. Yet despite the impressive discovery of this tunnel, it serves as yet another reminder of the ongoing, often frustrating efforts to piece together historical truths, which are as elusive as they are captivating, sparking as much frustration as intrigue among those who wish to pin down the elusive details of the past. Moving on, let's explore the impact of discoveries that span centuries. The Tale of a Medieval Wedding Ring 
In a completely different slice of history, take the example of David Bohr, a 69-year-old who uses a metal detector as a hobby. While many of us might only find trivial items, David found a medieval wedding ring in Dorset, England. At first, he thought it was just trash, but it turned out to be a gold ring valued at around $47,000. This ring is thought to have been a wedding gift from Sir Thomas Brooke to Lady Joan Brooke, engraved in medieval French with the words, as hold your faith, hold mine. The ring is also in excellent condition, showcasing the remarkable skills of medieval craftsmen. It's a discovery that makes one ponder why some seem to stumble upon great fortune, while others do not. Graffiti, too, has a history as old as human settlements. We often overlook it as a modern act of defiance, yet our ancestors were just as eager to leave their marks. The Lincoln Medieval Graffiti Project, started in 2013, has highlighted these ancient marks, showing that people have always wanted to leave a sign that they existed. The project's work underscores a continuous human urge to say, using the walls of their cities as their canvas. This connection to the past through simple marks shows that despite the passage of centuries, some human desires remain unchanged. In Lincolnshire, over 200 churches have been found to contain old carvings on their walls, known as graffiti. These aren't the random scribbles you often see today, but rather thoughtful messages from the past. Volunteers are using modern tools like LED lights and cameras to capture these writings, which include names and dates from long ago. The carvings were made with a specific intention. For example, the drawing of a ship often meant someone was praying for a safe journey or giving thanks after a safe return. Another common carving is that of a straw man, which in old pagan practices is associated with hopes for growth and fertility. These ancient signs, carrying deep meanings, show a serious purpose behind each stroke, unlike today's graffiti, which many view as mere defacement. Turning our attention to an artifact called the Magic Mirror from the Cincinnati Art Museum, this piece, dating back to the 15th or 16th century, initially didn't look very important. It was found forgotten in storage, but it hides a fascinating feature that only appears in the right lighting. This mirror was made using a complex method where craftsmen would create a design on one side of a bronze plate. The other side was polished to a high shine and subtly altered so that when light hits it just right, a hidden image appears. This type of work suggests the mirror was more than just a decorative piece. It likely had a significant role in religious or noble settings. Now, there is the story of Tipu Sultan's sword, which sold for an astonishing $17.5 million. Tipu Sultan, often called the Tiger of Mysore, was a ruler in India known for his brave resistance against British control. His sword, crafted from exceptional materials and skill, symbolizes his power and resistance. The high price it fetched at auction reflects not only its craftsmanship and historical importance, but also the enduring legacy of Tipu Sultan's reign. These items, from the ancient graffiti to the regal sword, weave a narrative of human history that spans centuries. They reveal the ways people have expressed their hopes, beliefs, and statuses through different mediums. Each carved ship and every designed mirror tells a story of human ingenuity and cultural practices. These stories connect us to our ancestors, showing us that even the simplest objects can carry profound meanings and reflect the complexities of human life. They encourage us to look deeper into our surroundings, appreciating the rich histories and the skilled artistry that shaped our past. In 2023, a significant discovery occurred along a dried riverbed in northern Florida. While excavating, researchers found the remains of ancient creatures resembling elephants, but they were actually called gomphotheres. These fossils, dating back six million years, represent one of the most important finds of their kind in North America. Gomphotheres, which originated around 23 million years ago in Africa, had adapted to many environments over the millennia. They developed various tusk shapes, including some species that had an additional set on their lower jaws. The discovery raised a significant question for scientists. Why did these ancient creatures all die in the same location? 
One might wonder if these intelligent animals chose this place as a common burial ground. However, it's more likely that they were tragically killed in a massive natural disaster that occurred at that spot. Far from Florida, on the island of Pohnpei within the Federated States of Micronesia, lies another fascinating site called Nan Madal. Established between the 13th and 17th centuries, this city is built on coral reefs and consists of 92 artificial islands. It was the heart of the Saudalure dynasty. Building such a massive structure directly on coral reefs, especially without modern construction tools, is hard to understand. Despite recognizing that a complex society once lived here, researchers are still trying to figure out how these people managed to construct and maintain such a large and intricate city on such a challenging foundation. Both these scenarios, from ancient Florida to the Pacific Ocean, present intriguing challenges in understanding the past. The Gomphotheres fossils provide a window into the types of creatures that roamed the Earth millions of years ago, and the structures on Nan Madal offer insights into the architectural feats achieved by ancient civilizations. These discoveries are crucial for scientists as they piece together historical environments and the capabilities of early humans and their contemporaries. As research continues, these findings will help fill in the gaps of our understanding of historical life and technological advancement. Now, let's examine the clash between bold claims and scientific truths. The controversial claims of Bosnia's pyramids. In the town of Visoko in Bosnia, something unusual is claimed to exist, what some have termed energy pyramids. These structures were first brought into the public eye in 2005 by Samir Osmanagic, a businessman with a flair for the dramatic, who self-identifies as an archaeologist. Osmanagic made bold statements, suggesting that these hills are not mere mounds of earth, but ancient monumental pyramids, which he argued are even older than the famed pyramids in Egypt, purportedly over 25,000 years old. These claims have drawn attention from around the world, appealing to a wide array of individuals, from academic experts to those fond of conspiracy theories. However, many experts in the fields of archaeology and geology have refuted Osmanagic's claims, identifying the so-called pyramids as natural geological formations known as flat irons, which are commonly shaped by long-term erosion and environmental influences. Institutions like the European Association of Archaeologists have been openly critical of Osmanagic's assertions, dismissing them as lacking in scientific basis and misleading to the public. They have even described his promotions of these structures as harmful fabrications meant to deceive. Nonetheless, the belief that these hills could have once housed an advanced ancient civilization continues to linger among some enthusiasts. Half a continent away in Austria, Another discovery once captured public and academic interest, the mummified remains of a child discovered in a family crypt. It is believed that this child was the firstborn son of a distinguished Austrian count, whose life was tragically short, spanning from 1625 to 1626. Rather than ancient scripts or artifacts, modern scientific methods have brought to light details of this child's brief existence. Techniques such as CT scans, radiocarbon dating, and thorough historical analysis have provided insights into the child's life and the era in which he lived, showcasing how technology can bridge the gap between past and present. In both cases, from the hills of Visoko to the crypts of Austria, the contrast between scientific analysis and speculative claims presents a compelling narrative. While Visoko's hills challenge our understanding of history with bold claims of ancient advanced civilizations, the scientific scrutiny they face underscores the importance of evidence and rigorous methodology in distinguishing fact from fiction. Similarly, the exploration into the life of a young Austrian noble through modern technology illustrates the power of scientific tools to uncover and verify historical truths, even from the most silent witnesses, those long past. These stories invite us to reflect on how we interpret the past and the role of science in shaping our understanding of history. They also caution us against the allure of sensational claims that, 
despite their appeal, may lack factual grounding. As we navigate these narratives, the ongoing debate continues to stir curiosity and skepticism, reminding us to question and seek evidence in our quest for knowledge about our world and its history. Scientists have recently unearthed the sad story of a young boy believed to be named Reichard Wilhelm. Despite his noble background, Reichard suffered from severe nutritional problems, including a significant lack of vitamin D. These health issues were severe enough that they likely led to his death from pneumonia. This situation prompts an important question. Why would a child from a noble family suffer from poor nutrition? The paradox deepens when it's revealed that Reichard was overweight, suggesting a life of both neglect and excess. He also lacked sufficient sunlight, hinting that he was perhaps too sheltered, kept indoors too often. This paints a picture of a child who was excessively pampered, but in a way that neglected his basic health needs. Could the yellow brick road be more than a natural formation? Perhaps evidence of an ancient advanced civilization? Like, comment, and subscribe for more.